Hey guys, welcome to Heroes of the Storm again. Uh, I'd like to give you guys today a short rundown on the map Tomb of the Spider Queen, nooks and crannies, pathways, tips and tricks, something that you might not have otherwise known about. Um, yeah, just just kind of go over the map, just kind of give you guys a better understanding of how the map works and how to be safe when you play on this map. Uh, the first thing I want to go over is the map mechanic. I'll go over that in a few seconds when the minions spawn, but basically the way it works is you kill enemy minions those minions and enemy heroes but primarily enemy minions those minions drop gems you can collect your enemies gems turn them in an altar when you collect a certain threshold of gems uh, you will spawn big very very powerful minions that will push down all three lanes until they are killed or until the timer runs out on them they are timed individually uh, at which point they will stop and the, the eggs the, the altars will respawn and then you can kind of turn them in again just show you what those look like quickly that's the altar spawning, the altar spawn at 30 seconds into the game. So you kill one of these little spider things, these spider things are uh, replace the ranged minions. That's what it looks like on this map. And that's what one of the gems looks like. You'll notice it's in my team's colour. If one of mine dies, it will be a slightly translucent orangey colour. You can only pick up gems that are in your team's colour. They will drop from the enemy. It's kind of confusing. If you die, you will lose all of your gems, but your enemy will not be able to pick them up. Just be aware of that. But your your allies will. So if I were to die now, I would drop one blue gem to my team and three orange gems. The enemy would try and pick up their gems. My allies could pick up mine. What you do then is you turn in the gems. You go to one of these altars. Right click to turn in. Wait for that to cast. And then you turn in. And as you see, my team now has one. Uh, you can interrupt that through standard stuff. Anything that interrupts will interrupt um, turning in. Yeah, that, that, that's pretty much how that works. Uh, it goes up in increments of five each time you turn it in successfully and once the eggs are turned in and the, the the mobs are pushing down the lane you can no longer turn any in and it's 15 seconds I believe it might be 20 seconds after they've all been killed that you can turn in again uh, another cool little thing I want to show you guys about is just this little section up here so as you may have seen before this map is below the uh, sky temple map the sky temple map is in the lore quote unquote above this map and you'll find that out by if you repeatedly click this thing see it starts to uh, to jump and jiggle a little bit if you click it enough times I could be here a while I'm just warning you now you get a little visitor Glory to the firstborn. Harrison Jones swings down the rope I mean Harrison Jones from the book of Universe comes in come on Harrison let's get it Oh, he's got the artifact. Puts it on his back. Oh, is he going to make it? And climbs on the rope. And gets out. And if you go into the Sky Temple and find where he comes out, ooh, uh, you can see him leaving with the artifact and the uh, spiders trying to chase him out. Anyway, that's the fun stuff done. Now let's talk about the actual map and how to play it properly. I'm going to start with individual lanes and just kind of go down through them. So uh, this this part of the map is kind of important. Uh, the boss will spawn up here in a few seconds. Actually, I think right now. Oh, I haven't seen that before. That's cool. That's a cool little spawn animation. So yeah, um, the boss spawns here. He's set back quite significantly far from the smoke grate, so it's unlikely that the enemy team will have a scouter, and if they do, it's going to be very, very difficult for them to, uh, to take the boss for the five or however many it is. But of course they might, and they might have carried the boss back or anything. If you are planning on interrupting the boss, I recommend that you come at it from the side. And I'll show you how to do that right now. So a lot of people don't know about this little side panel up here, this little side channel you can go through. A lot of people will just kind of panic. And of course the enemy can use this as number stop the enemy coming up here and completely annihilating you. But a lot of people don't know about that. And a lot of people will panic and find themselves or feel isolated when they're really not. You can just run up and through here and you'll be safe. It's safe if you're getting ganked from below or you just kind of find yourself in a dodgy spot. Uh, around here is quite clever the way it's divided up into two and almost three sections it means that it's incredibly good for just kind of getting around it's it's if you can make it if the team is chasing if the enemy team is chasing you and you make it into this section you can really have some fun with them a little bit and just kind of run around through here like that and all kinds of stuff and the enemy team will panic and think you've gone down here if they can't have vision or think maybe you've made it into the base somehow it's great it's it, it's great fun Next part about this lane is this section down here. This is the, the this is the top altar, what's known as top altar. Uh, this kind of whole section is kind of a little bit boring, I guess. Uh, one thing to mention is that the lanes are incredibly close together. 
Uh, if you see someone in a top lane and you're in mid lane who's in trouble, go up and help them. Um, maybe helping them will be worth... You, you can stop them getting killed and that will be worth the experience you'll miss out on. And it really won't be that much. It's one or two mobs at most. If you are trying to gank uh, one of these lanes, please use these grates. If for nothing else, you use it from oh, I'm not going for a proper build. Don't don't worry. I'm I'm not a very good zero tool, but this is just me to get on the map quick and just to get out of the UI. Uh, if you are trying to gank, please use these smoke grates for one reason or another. Uh, most of the time, a more successful gank will come from through here. If if you want to really get behind them, because it just means they have. Um, less time to react and less room to move in but please use these grates they're great for just getting around in uh, if you you can hit quite a lot of people when you're standing here as you can see I can hit quite a, a wide radius of it so if I was worried that my team were trying to turn in or the enemy team were trying to turn in I could just go through the smoke and see if I could hit one of them obviously that wouldn't hit because I'm a really bad shot with zero at all also, likewise in the same vein, be careful of these smoke grates. This gem, I like to think, or, or this gem and this block really, is kind of my no man's land, my kind of point of no return that I don't like to cross. If I don't see where like two of them are on the map, if I can only see three of them, I will not like to pass this line here because it can, you can just get ganked and you will die just so quickly on this, uh, on, this lane, on this map and particularly on this lane. Mid lane is very, very vulnerable. To the same effect, if you're caught out of position, I would advise running through here. Just purely because if you if you go to run down here, and then a Zeratul or Illidan or ETC, someone does that, you're going to be body blocked and you're not going to be able to make it through. And then you've got to run down through here. And of course, in this same time, the person who's body blocked you can just come down here and meet you again. It's it's very very difficult. I wouldn't I would avoid running against that. But. If you do find yourself completely desperate to get away and you are here, it's kind of unadvisable to run, or more realistically, if you're here and you find yourself getting got, um, you're kind of dead, really, in all honesty, because they, they have so many ways of getting to you and you have so little ways of getting out. But if you do have a problem, you can make it to, say, here. You can make it over just about. So if you have one of those abilities, like a Sylvanas or a Blink or something like that, uh, you can make it out if you're very, very lucky. But I would try and avoid getting caught out of position here, purely because if you notice the one difference between uh, the bottom altar and the top altar, is bottom altar does not have these escape routes here. These are completely solid, which kind of means that you can't get ganked as hard. Bottom lane is a lot safer than the other two lanes if you just if you're really worried about getting ganked. The kind of the point of no return really is up here somewhere, which is very unusual for for any lane. But it's uh, it's just it, bottom lane is a lot safer to go to to go in, uh, to to be around really because they can't come through here, which means they have to come at you if they're coming from above you, through through this channel, or this channel, oh this channel, and both of those are close enough that you don't really need to worry about either of them because the lane is so huge. If you're standing, say here, just kind of poking the cannon towers or whatever, you'll see them early and you can make it through around here and if you make it say here and then they're on you don't run for the gate run down here and around the back I've seen so many people get caught out when they could have so easily done that so my advice would be if you're planning on chilling out in bottom lane just kind of sit in a reasonable position and then just run down through the bottom if they're pushing you from above and don't be afraid to run up and through the gate if they're pushing you from below speaking of below this is a nice little network that because of the nature of the map a lot of it, as you can see here, stays dark for a lot of of the game. And the reward, kind of the juicy reward hidden in the darkness, is these siege giants. I don't particularly think it's worth um, risking your life for. I don't. I don't particularly think it's worth taking a risk just to get a, a set of siege giants. However, if you do find yourself in the middle of the map with nothing to do and you feel relatively safe, feel free to get them. Uh, this is a very, very good spot to set up baked ganks if you if you are um, running through and you pretend you've got caught out. Oh no, I'm going to run away. Your team can be hiding in this brush. It's very difficult to check it without, without kind of really putting yourself there. Uh, obviously skill shots can just be fired like through it, like that. But not a lot of people will do that just because it's such a weird brush to stand in. It's fairly big, you can get a lot of people in here and then you can just pop out, cleave and just kind of go mad with it. So that's a very nice spot if you want to bait, if you want to bait the enemy team back into it. But other than that, bottom lane is just pretty safe. Wow. For some reason on this map, and this is a little tip that, that a lot of people don't realise, I think maybe the range minions are more powerful, but the range minion just seems to bunch up 
a lot more than other maps do. Maybe other maps do it the same, but I haven't noticed it because they don't look as different. But on this map, they just there just seems to be so many ranged minions after a few after a few waves have died. And thus, because they're all ranged minions, there seems to be a whole hell of a lot more um minions. <laughs> a lot of a lot more gems. The potential for gems is 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 much higher. I should have taken another one. Anyway. So, uh, a cool little thing which a lot of people don't realise is you can tell when the gems are about to despawn. As you see, it looks fine there, and it gradually starts It gradually starts to swirl and pulse. It's kind of subtle, and then it disappears. So you can see when it's about to go, so a lot of people complain that it just disappears, and there's no kind of teller like there is, there's no kind of tell like with, with the regen globe. The regen globes pulse a little bit before they disappear, but that's about it, really. And there's not really much else to talk about, in all honesty, on this map. Um, actually, no, there is one big thing to talk about which a lot of people don't realise and a lot of people don't know about and I'll show you on the enemy side because then I can do something with it is this little gate up here. Oh, it looks nice and obvious, doesn't it? And yes, you can attack it. And yes, you can destroy it. Doesn't really add that much to the map. Um, all it does mean is that if you are chasing someone and you've somehow managed to isolate them from all the gates or you are being chased and you have been isolated from all your gates there's another gate you can go to and that means that you can tunnel someone into here if it's already been destroyed which I would advise you do just because if you've got Vampiric Assault you can get some health back you don't take any damage from doing it if you've taken top 4 which a lot of people will have at quite, um, quite a lot of stages because top 4 tends to be pushed a little bit more than the other two you can blink out into the top 4 space and get out really easily and once you've destroyed that, all it really does is it allows you to finish off someone who finds himself on incredibly low HP, like 1 or 2 HP. Nova, Zeratul, any of the really long range heroes like Azabalan can really come in here and, and kind of punish it and then go, just get out with relative ease. Uh, the, there's a cool little sweet spot in top lane, just like this whole section here is sweet if, if, um, if you want to kill someone without getting shot by cannons, you can do so. Likewise, you can blink as I just showed you into it, and then you can just kind of hide. This little section up here is kind of nice because, as you see when I'm standing here, they can't see me. And a lot of people, this part of the map, and subsequently this part of the map, tend to have a lot of heat on them throughout the map. I don't really know why, but they do. It's kind of strange, but a lot of fights will happen around about here and on the other side of the map. So know this area, know that you can stand here, you can blink about for anywhere really, this is a nice little radius that you can get to if someone's in trouble, or if you're in trouble. And if you want, you can hide in the brush here, wait for someone to come out, which a lot of people will do because again, web weavers and just turning in, going to get the map objectives, people have to leave the base, you can't really just sit and turtle. Uh, and, and this is a great spot just to kind of to kind of deal with that. I've seen a few people um, kind of experiment with the kill the minions that spawn tactic. I can't remember what that's called. It's called something in League of Legends. It's it, it's kind of useful. It makes sense a little bit. It works a little bit. Not that much. I wouldn't do it myself. I think it's just a kind of a waste of time. I think uh, there's there's much much better tactics you can do out there. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah. Sorry, this video is going to come out so late. My computer's had a bit of a nightmare today, as you can probably tell. Um. Yeah, that'll be it. Uh, if, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Uh, it really helps me out. Um, if you want to see videos like this, I'm going to do all the maps at one point or another. If you want to see one map ahead of another, please let me know. If you want to see anything spe specific, like a specific map guide, a specific hero guide, a specific spell guide, like Bloodlust or something, which is a, a spell that I'm interested in, uh, let me know and I'll, uh, and, and I'll get involved in that. Yeah, uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.